In this video, I will derive the entropy change of an ideal gas in several different processes, including isothermal, isochoric, isobaric, uh, adiabatic, and arbitrary processes. And I will use the result for the reversible adiabatic process to derive the relation between the temperature ratio and the volume ratio in the reversible adiabatic process, uh, which is uh, temperature ratio equals the volume ratio to the power of 1 minus gamma. And gamma is Cp divided by Cv. All right, so first, reversible isothermal. Uh, when dt equals 0, du equals 0, because the internal energy of an ideal gas only depends on temperature. And uh, dq plus dw equals 0, dq reversible equals negative, dw reversible equals PdV, because in a reversible process, P external equals P, and pressure equals nRT over V. We plug this in here, and we get the integral of nR over V dV. The result is the entropy change equals nR logarithm V final over V initial for a reversible isothermal process. What about reversible isochoric? Isochoric means dV is zero, then dW is zero, the Q reversible equals CVDT, the entropy change then is simply the integral of CV over T, DT, that's CV times the logarithm of the temperature ratio. Isobaric is similar to isochoric. Uh, the only difference is DQ reversible is equal to CPDT here. It's CVDT in an isochoric process, CPDT in the isobaric process. Uh, therefore, the derivation is similar. The entropy change is CP times the logarithm of the temperature ratio. Reversible adiabatic, DQ reversible is zero. Therefore, there's no entropy change. How about just any reversible process from PI, VI, TI to PF, VF, TF? Because entropy is a state function, so we can design another two-step process to connect the initial state and the final state. And we simply compute the entropy change of step one and the entropy change of step two. And then we sum it up. That will give me the difference between the entropy of the final state and the entropy of the initial state. And that's the change of entropy. And again, we can do this only because entropy is a state function. It does not depend on the path. And how do we get this first one? Uh, first step, volume is constant. That's isochoric. So we just use isochoric equation here. We plug it in, we get this entropy change for step one. Step two, we hold temperature constant. And then we use the equation for this isothermal process. And uh, we get the entropy change of step two. And we sum it up. And again, we just need to uh, design or imagine a two-step process in which step one is reversible isochoric, step two is reversible isothermal. How about a irreversible process. If you have a irreversible process, you cannot use this equation directly. To use this e equation, you have to know what's dq reversible. So how do we tackle this problem? From any initial state to any given final state. Oh, well, here's the hint. Entropy is a state function. If entropy is a state function, we simply say the entropy changes this. Because if you compare uh, this F and E, they have the same initial state, they have the same final state. Therefore, they have the same initial entropy, they have the same final entropy. Therefore, the entropy changing here is the same as the entropy changing here. Now, finally, 
uh, I will prove this temperature ratio equals volume ratio to the power of 1 minus gamma for a reversible adiabatic process really quickly. A reversible adiabatic process uh, involves the change of P, V, and T simultaneously. So we have the initial uh, state here and final state here. And then we know the entropy change of a reversible adiabatic process is zero. Delta S is zero. Also, we can just you know, design a two-step process to connect from the initial state to the final state using a reversible isochoric process to get the entropy and another um, I reversible isothermal process to get the entropy of step two. And we sum up the entropy of step one and step two, it should be zero. Therefore, this sum should be zero. Therefore, CV times logarithm of temperature ratio should be negative NR times the logarithm of the volume ratio. And then we can uh, rewrite this NR to be CP minus CV. And remember, gamma is CP over CV. So in the end, we have this relation between the temperature ratio and volume ratio. Uh, the temperature ratio equals the volume ratio to the power of 1 minus gamma.